Hola y bienvenidos a Your Average Bear Gaming. For most of this audience that made no sense, hello and welcome to Your Average Bear Gaming. I am George. Today we're going to do something kind of cool. It's going to be a kind of a rehash of something we've already done. The trick here is to do black space marine armor. Yes, again. But this time we're going to do it differently. So this is basically a part two. So we have one way of doing quick, easy, and good looking space marine armor in the black version. Now we have a different way of doing something very similar, having our models look pretty cool, and making them look that way in a, in a GIF. So, are you curious? Let's check it out. For this approach to quick painting black space marine armor, we're going to start with our batch of space marines and we're going to prime them black. Uh, I've used uh, just a normal black uh, flat primer and so everything on the space marine is, uh, is nice and black. Now this is going to present a, a few issues, right? So uh, unlike the last approach where we started with gray, uh, I can't really do a um, um, can't really do shadows, right? Because there's nothing darker than this black. There's no paint I could use to make to make this blacker. Um, so we don't have shadows, but we can add highlights and midtones and so whatever is left behind is shadows uh, and so I think the way we're going to do this is with with a bit of this guy we're going to go for a metallic sheen all over these guys um, <clears throat> I don't know if this is actually going to work. Uh, well, I mean, you, I'm going to be able to get paint on them, but I don't know if it's going to make it look the way I'm thinking uh, up here in my, in my brain. So, I'm going to start with a dry brush of the darkest silver I have, and that's that gunmetal silver. You could, if you wanted to, you could add a little bit of extra black paint to make it a little darker. I'm gonna leave it just as it is for maximum simplicity, but this is one of those deals that uh, you wanna experiment a bit with it. And so my objective here is to load up a dry brush and make it nice and dry and just start dry brushing all over the model. Anything that's gonna be essentially black. Right, here's what they look like after that dry brush. Um, And so you can see how it's, it looks like it's both black and silver. Uh, it's a, a little thing I stumbled upon uh, doing accent black for other models. And I like the way it looks. Um, you know, I'm actually less sure of it here. I think maybe this approach might be really good for an accent. I'm not sure if it's gonna carry over to having a full model that has the same appearance. Having said that, we're going to push forward. We're going to try, right? We get, we're going to experiment on this thing uh, to see if we even like it, right? So um, one of the problems I need to solve with this approach is that it really does, so it really does look really very silver. And I mean, it looks like a metallic black, but I kind of want to tone it down. There's, there's really too much shine, uh, way more shine than I anticipated uh, when I started this uh, this process. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that shine down 
with a little dark tone. It's a wash. Um, uh, I normally put this over a uh, base coat glaze, but I'm going to see how this works out. When all is said and done, if I don't like the way this looks, we can always repaint it. But let's see how this works. Uh, so I'm going to dab some of this undiluted dark wash all over the black parts of the model. I think that'll accomplish a couple of things. It'll help me bring down the shine, but it'll also help kind of give a little bit of variation to the shadows and midtones. It's interesting because the shadows are ultimately going to be black, and the shadows are already there um, because I used a dry brush. It didn't get into all the little crevices, right? That's that's by design. But what I really want to do is kind of deepen those shadows, at least compared to the mid-tone. Okay, so I've hit all those spots that are going to be black, uh, or that I want to look black. Um, it looks quite a bit different already. If we compare these two, this one looks a lot less shiny, which is kind of the idea. Um, let's see what it looks like when it dries up, and I'll do the same thing to the others while that happens. So I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about these, um, but now that that uh, that that, dry, uh, that wash has dried, I kind of like the way these look. Um, they're still pretty shiny, but they're actually a, quite a little bit less silver, um, and I like the way it looks. Uh, yeah, <laughs> this is the nice thing about experimentation is that sometimes. Well, okay, a lot of times it fails, but sometimes, sometimes you find something out that you didn't know before and you really like, and uh, it makes all those previous failures worthwhile. At least, that's my take on things. So, I think what I'd like to do now is, is hit it with a bit more wash. Um... And so I'm of two minds, right? So I can go back and just give it a little bit, another coat of the dark tone. Uh, I don't, I don't think I've ever done two passes on the on the on the dark wash, but um, I think it might help bring the bring the shine down even a little bit more. However, I am considering going with some strong tone, and that's because if I look at them right now. They have a very cold look, so there's the only colors really are black and the reflection of the metallic, I guess, mica? Is that the, whatever that is, the little metallic flakes that are in there. That's really the only color that you get, and so there's a very strong, like a, like a coldness to the model, and I'm kind of, I kind of wanted to do, like a, I wanted to have a, a, a warmness, kind of a, an inherent warmth to it that comes from using warm colors like reds and browns and, and things like that. And so I'm thinking that if I add some strong tone, maybe I can bring back some of that warmth, or I, I, maybe not bring back because I didn't, I, I primed these in black, so there's no warmth there to be had. Most of my models are primed in, um, in off-white, and so there's an inherent white uh, warmth to it so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try it both ways. So here's my concern. Uh, this strong tone is going to do what I want. Um, and so if that's the case, then nothing ventured, nothing gained, but also nothing lost. But I, I am curious to see what it looks like. And so I'm going to paint, I'm going to give them a second wash. Uh, with the strong tone, but I'm also going to do some of these with the just straight up dark tone because uh, I want to see I want to see what results, if any, uh, we've got. So 
Let's start off with the strong tone. Let's see if giving the reflections this brownish tint will do anything to warm up the model, uh, or if it's just going to dry up and look the same as before. It's probably a little hard to tell, but there is a little bit of brown um, on that on that second layer. Um, I just don't know if it's going to if it's going to show up when it dries. Uh, but we'll wait and see. We'll let this dry and see where it goes. In the meantime, I will repeat the process with some of these. Alright, so these guys are nice and dry. Uh, I have one of each type of wash. And uh, the difference is kind of subtle. And I'm looking at the camera screen, and I, it, it looks more subtle there, I think, than it looks in real life. Here, let me show you the back side. Um, and there does seem to be a kind of a difference here. Uh, so this one right here, this is the one with two coats of the dark tone. This one right here has one coat of dark tone and one coat of strong tone. And you can tell, kind of right off the bat, this one is shinier than this one, and that's not something I expected. Um, but this one does have like a, almost like a like a patina of rust on it, which, again, I wasn't expecting, at least I wasn't expecting that that's how it would look. <clears throat> I expected kind of a warmness to it, and that's what we're getting, but it kind of reads like a, like a very just a thin layer of rust and I think it looks really cool. That isn't to say that this one is not good. Um, I think it's good in its own right. It's just different than this one. And I think that's an important difference to think about when you're going to do these things, uh, when, when you're painting black armor uh, with a quick paint, is that you know, you're going to spend a ton of time with the base coat and the washing, like these first few steps, they define in a very real way what the model ends up looking like. Um, it's, you know, that, that paint is the foundation of everything that goes after it. And some of the choices that you make can have pretty significant uh, and sometimes subtle and sometimes somewhere in between. It could have a big impact on your results and I think this is really neat I'm glad I tried this I'm glad I thought of it and uh, what I'm gonna do instead of going back and painting them all in one style I'm gonna actually just keep them as they are so I have three like this and I have two like this for an ordinary squad I wouldn't mix them up like this but for this one I'm going to just I want to see what they look like I want to see what the difference looks like once it's all said and done, like when I paint the guns and I add the details, because I think that's going to, I think that's going to determine, at least for me, how I do this again in the future. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. I really like the way these look. Alright, so the bulk of this uh, Space Marine is basically done. Um, he's far from being at the end, but I think the, the biggest lift is already done. What remains here is going to be important, um, but it's not as important. And that is to start picking out some of these uh, sort of details, or like larger size details. Uh, it's, the, it's the layer paint phase of your project. It's where you pick out kind of large-scale details and start putting in the different colors. So for my Death Watch, I use red as the secondary color or accent color. I'm not quite sure what I would call it. So I usually pick out one knee pad uh, the the guns are almost always mostly red. Um, 
Sometimes I put a little patch of color on the backpack on the power plant. Um, not always, but I think I'm going to try that in this case. Um, because these models are so dark, I want to I want to make sure that uh, I get a, a kind of an extra splash of color. But you know, whatever Space Marine. Um, kind of paint recipe or, or, or color scheme, color paradigm, whatever you want to call it, you know, just apply it after these two uh, techniques, or after these two steps of this technique. Now, the purpose of this video isn't to show you all the details, um, so I'm not going to belabor the process, but I'm going to do those things off camera like I would any other Space Marine um, troop choice uh, you know do, uh, do this kind of uh, step here I'll add the details give it a nice coat of matte varnish to help protect the results and once that's all done I'll come back and show you the results Are the completed models. Uh, I went ahead and uh, added those details, uh, did uh, some additional washing, made some decent looking bases for these uh, troops to stand upon. Uh, and so the details really aren't the focus of this build. The focus is on the main stuff. In other words, how does the black armor look? Or does it, does it look good? Whatever. And I'm both, I'm both happy and not happy with these results. Um, so basically, I don't know that I can recommend this necessarily, but it does have certain advantages that you might want to take advantage of. So right off the bat, I can tell you that this is easier than my other way of doing black armor. The other way of doing black armor involved painting them uh, with a uh, with a dark gray base coat glaze and washing that over with uh, some dark uh, some dark tone. It's a it's a the darkest wash you can get from Army Painter. Uh, insert your wash of choice in that discussion, probably. Um, and so. The difference between those two is that these are quite, these are quite a bit darker, um, and it's uh, it's it's darker, but it's also kind of more uniform, which I kind of don't like. But you might. Uh, so so there is there's definitely something to be said for it, right? Right. There's less variability variability in the black, and maybe that's what you're looking for. Maybe you want something a little darker, a little bit more menacing. Um, and these certainly, they certainly do feel a bit more grimdark, even if they're not grimy the way typically you know grimdark approaches to painting uh, might look. Um, so there's that, and, and I think the biggest advantage in this approach is that, in spite of the shortcomings of the end result. Uh, which you know they're very very simple. Um, it's very fast. Uh, the you know, it's a it's, you basically prime it black and then you give it a, a, a dry brush of the silver metallic silver and you're basically done. Uh, and the amount of detail that you add is entirely up to you. Um, I added a pretty decent amount of detail, but I didn't uh, I didn't do a lot of. Like, I didn't add any shadows, I didn't add any highlights, I didn't do any edge highlighting. And this is one of those cases where I'm thinking edge highlighting might help. Um, because it's so uniformly black. And that's unfortunate because the whole idea behind this approach is that we don't want to do manual highlighting. And edge highlighting is a very manual process. Uh, you can try to get away with, uh, you know, kind of doing some dry brushing, but the model is so round that I don't think that that's going to give you the results you think. You're going to get you're going to get the edge highlight color on a lot more places than you think. So, so you know, there's some pros and cons to this approach, but it is very very fast. Um, I do have to admit that, and I like that. Uh, it, it, it's gonna—if you have a large army, 
uh, this might be the way to go. If you have a large army with, with troops with black armor and you want to keep them fairly uniform and you don't want to spend a ton of time on it, this might be the way to go for you. Um, I think the next thing I want to do before I wrap up this video is kind of compare the two types of, black, uh, of quick painting uh, for black armor. And so here are the two batches. We have the batch I just finished right now, and we have the batch I did a couple of videos ago. And so I think that it's it's I think it's reasonable to say that these are both black armor. Um, there are legitimate approaches to black armor. They were both reasonably quick in that they didn't require any manual highlights, any manual shadows. Um, and at least for my approach here, I didn't do any edge highlighting, uh, and I didn't do or need any edge highlighting on this approach either. So, they're pretty comparable in terms of outcomes and in terms of speed. So yeah, they're both black, but you can see that this one I think has a bit more visual interest. This one, the black kind of just blends into itself and it, uh, it's really, really dark, right? This one, it still looks black, although not right next to this guy. This guy clearly looks black. This guy looks dark gray, although, but if you look at him, look at him by himself, he looks reasonably black. Like you could have field a whole army of these guys and no one would say, hey man, those are some gray marines. Uh, they'd look pretty black to me. Then again, compare and contrast, you've got some differences here that you're going to want to grapple with. Uh, and so the decision is obviously yours to make. Um, this is a little faster. I think this has a little bit more visual interest, but they both remain legitimate approaches to quick painting some black Space Marine armor. I don't know for a fact that this translates well to other armies. Like if you're gonna have a black army of, let's say, Tau or Eldar or something like that, the armor is a little different. And if I think about like uh, Imperial Guard, for example, they don't wear, they, they don't, they wear some armor, but it's mostly um, a, a tunic. Uh, for sure, I don't know that this approach uh, is going to work as well because they're not wearing, you know, plate armor all over the place. They're only wearing it like on their helmet, maybe some, maybe some little pads here and there. For the most part, they're wearing, uh, like a, a BDU, like a battle dress uniform. I think that's what BDU is called. It, those camouflage pants and shirts or whatever. Um, and so having this shiny approach doesn't make sense for those guys. Um, so if you do decide to take this approach, there's a couple of things I want to point out or caution you uh, about. Uh, so one of them is that when you first finish the dry brushing, and for most of the time that you have these models in your hand when you're painting them, the black armor is going to be very, very shiny. Even when I added the dark wash, um, it was very, very shiny. When I hit it with the matte varnish, though, that shine went way down. But it's not completely gone. If you look at different angles of this guy, you'll see that there's a reflection kind of all over the place. Uh, but it's it's quite a bit toned down from from kind of how it started its life as a painted model. Um, so if you take this approach, you probably want to do some, some matte varnish afterwards. The other thing that I will kind of point out is that if you're doing a lot of glazing, um, <laughs> Particularly in the base coat step, like when you when you're doing the uh, when you're doing the weapons and the knee pads and stuff like that, uh, it is really hard to paint over black. You're going to need a lot of coats of glaze, um, even if, even just your um, even if you're just using your basically thinned layer paint. It's going to take a lot of coats, um, especially if it's going over the washed, because there's a kind of a gloss that the wash leaves behind. And that makes it harder for the uh, layer paint that goes on top uh, to stick. So it's something to keep in mind. Um, it, this is not completely like, oh, it's the easiest thing in the world to do, and you're not going to have any trouble. No, there's a there's a trade-off. Um, and so I found it a little frustrating to go over the, the weapons and the knee pads over and over and over again. I think I needed like four or five coats of the, of the paint the glaze that I was using in order to get 
um, decent coverage. And even then, it can be a little spotty in places, especially the weapons. You'll notice the weapons uh, look pretty dark. It look, it, they almost look like a dry brush, a very light black over them. I did not. Uh, this is just the, the, the black undercoat showing through the red of the weapon. So that's another point to consider. About the last thing I want to mention uh, as, a, as kind of a, a, a heads up for this approach. Um, especially for like Space Marines, uh, I use a lot of metallics to kind of highlight certain things. Right? So you see this Aquila, um, the, the knife, uh, the barrels on the weapons. And so if the entire model is dry brushed and you go back and try to add a silver, uh, a very like a, like a muted silver over that, it's gonna, it's gonna look a lot like the rest of it. And so it's not really a problem except for places like this. You see this shoulder pad? Uh, with my other models, my shoulder pad is distinctly silver. It's very different from the rest of the armor. And that's one of the you know nice things about Death Watch as a Space Marine chapter is that they have this cool shoulder pauldron on their left and it sticks out, it contrasts with everything else that's happening, and it looks really cool. But if you do this approach, it's gonna blend in, and you may not want that. I also have a lot of little, you know, I have these little, like, uh, icons or whatever. Um, it's hard to kind of, it's hard to uh, make these metallic looking without going all the way silver, like I had to do for these Akilla, because uh, otherwise it just kind of looks like uh, the rest of the armor. It's not a deal breaker, but it is something that you absolutely want to be aware of. If you're not doing uh, Death Watch, then you're not going to have to worry about that pauldron on the left. Uh, you can just use whatever colors that your um, your army uses, and you'll be fine. But if you're doing Death Watch, that's something you're going to have to grapple with. Um, if you have a lot of metallic bits, that's something you're going to have to grapple with. Uh, so, like I said, this approach is quick. It provides relatively good results but it does have some drawbacks, so there's some choices you're going to have to make. I hope this video taught you something. I hope that uh, if you're interested in a very dark kind of Space Marine armor, and you wanted some shine, and you wanted to make him look kind of cool, but you wanted to do it quickly, um, maybe this is an approach you want to try. Maybe experiment with it, right? So I did it one way. Maybe you'll find a different way. And think about what would happen if you did something like this with... Um, with the custodies, right? So the custodies are all gold, and at least the custodies I've seen, they look kind of gross. <laughs> the, the fully gold armor looks, I haven't seen one look amazing. And I bet an approach like this, instead of using a silver dry brush, but using a gold dry brush, I think that would look really, really cool on a custody model. Um, and you can kind of play around with it, maybe with Chaos, you can add a brass or a bronze kind of a, a dry brush. The, the options are, okay, not limitless, but you have plenty of options to play with. So I would encourage you, if you have a few models of Space Marines lying around that you haven't painted yet and you really, really, really don't care about, maybe experiment with them, like I did with these. Uh, these are Inceptors, I th not Inceptors, these are Primaris... Whatever, they're the basic Primaris troops, uh, and uh, I didn't really care if I was to add these to my Death Watch army. I have a ton of Death Watch. I don't need any more. Uh, but I have some more if I want them. But more importantly, I was able to try these two things. I've tried this before with some measure of success. I hadn't tried this before, and I was curious to see what it would look like. And now I have another tool in my toolkit. So I would encourage you to play around with them if you have some extra time. If you have some extra models that you don't really care, if they look kind of gross, you're like, okay, well, maybe, maybe these never really happened. <laughs> At any rate, explore away, my nerdy friends. Uh, you will... If not enjoy the process, you'll at least enjoy learning something new, like I have. With that being said, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please leave a like and a subscribe. I'll sell it for one or the other, but if you can do both, that would be awesome. And as always, have a wonderful afternoon. Be nice to yourselves, 
and each other. Peace.